Hi, I'm Lemuel Baker, and I'm still here in the city of Rome. You know, this week we were talking about that wonderful topic entitled, In God's Image. And you know, we've just barely scratched the surface. Today, I was thinking about the Apostle Paul relative to the In God's Image topic. And of course, we already talked about Samson, how the enemy, and because of his excessive compulsive behavior, the enemy was able to come in through that open door and to chip away at the image of God and God's likeness in Samson's life. We said that he was born to be a judge in Israel. You know, Israel had different periods of time where there were patriarchs, judges, kings, and prophets. There were different periods of time where God would use patriarchs such as Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There were times when, they, when God would use uh, judges like Deborah and Samson. There were times where God would use prophets such as Samuel, whose words never fell to the ground. And then there were times he would use kings, starting with King Saul and then King David. Samson was one of those judges, born to be a judge, yet because of his struggles with excessive compulsive behaviors, the enemy was able to chip away at God's image in his life and God's likeness. And, of course, we talked about him. But today, I just could not stop thinking about the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul started off in a distorted configuration. That means that he started off not looking like God at all. Being at the, 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 the martyrdom scene for Stephen, or Stephen, Paul persecuted the Christians. He was on his way to Damascus to further persecute Christians. And of course, you know, Jesus appeared to him on the road to Damascus. And it was at that point where God's plan started to unfold for the Apostle Paul. Now, the Apostle Paul, of course, was a Jewish man. He was a Pharisee, very, very well educated. And he was of the elite status. So he was Jewish. He was of the elite status. One of the reasons we know he was elite was because in the city of Tarsus, only the elite families were able to obtain dual citizenship. They had the sufficient money to lobby and to pay for that. So Paul was Hebrew. He was a Jew. And then he had a dual citizen ship as a Roman because Tarsus was was governed by the Roman Empire and so he was able his family had enough money to buy him that dual citizenship well anyway it was this Paul extremely well educated from a well-off family in Tarsus persecuted Christians so spiritually Paul didn't look that good and it was here on the road to Damascus where after Satan had chipped away and distorted Paul to where he did not bear the image or likeness of God, to where when he was converted, it was hard to believe that he who persecuted the Jews was now a born-again Christian and headed to be an apostle. But God began a restoration process with the apostle Paul. God started with his spirit man. Number one, he converted the fallen spirit state of the Apostle Paul. And then he began renewing his mind. He took about three years and he went to the, 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 the parched and desert areas just outside east of Damascus. 
By the way, Paul was instrumental in planting Christianity in Damascus. And so God started the restoration process to enable the Apostle Paul to begin looking like God again. So God started restoring the image of himself in the Apostle Paul first, and it's always a first step, by saving his spirit man. Secondly, now Paul had to start shaping his soul, or God started shaping the Apostle Paul's soul, so that his soul realm would also begin looking like Elohim, the Creator, and then start acting like Him. And then Paul's physical features started to change. So God started working, excuse me, from the inside out, restoring the Apostle Paul back to the full image and likeness of God, his creator. And so it's such a marvelous story of God's full restoration. Of course, Paul went through very, very difficult times, but we see he set the perfect example of the righteous heart, the right heart. He had the right priorities, the right attitudes, and of course, he had the right motives. He put the things of God first, always put the things of God first. And he worked towards his, his earthly goal. His earth, his, he worked towards his heavenly reward. Excuse me. His heart was fixed on heavenly things. There's always hope for you and me. God had to personally intervene with the Apostle Paul. He finished his race very well. He died right here in Rome. He was executed here in Rome. He was a martyr here in Rome. He finished his course very strong. Two-thirds of what we call the, the New Testament and the epistles were written by the Apostle Paul. God brought him low so he could bring him up. So he, as an apostle of the kingdom, could build up and edify the body of Christ. He looked pretty good at the end of his race. I would say he looked just like God. He acted just like God. And that's the goal for us. That by the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, we end up looking like God. We end up acting like God. It's time for restoration. To what end? To the full image and likeness of God, our Creator. You remember the, the man, excuse me, we call Doubting Thomas. Well, after the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, until Jesus appeared to him, he didn't look very good. He wasn't really exuding the image, certainly not the likeness of God. He, he wasn't looking like God as creator. He was in fear and doubt. And he wasn't, of course, acting like God. Regardless of where we are in life, we usually say, oh, it's doubting Thomas. And we kind of are condescending toward him. The truth of that story is, Jesus says, I came not into the world to condemn the world, but that the world, excuse me, through him, me, Jesus, might be saved. God sent not his Son into the world 
to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. You remember that? Jesus did not condemn Thomas. All of us are made with, with we're coming from different places, so to speak. Psalm 103 says, God knows our frame. He knows what makes us tick. And that's what's good about God. He, he knows the details of our soul and our spirit, our body, our lives. After all, He's our Creator, and only He can fix and restore. Better than any psychologist, better than any psychiatrist. They can take us so far, and they do help. Thank God for the godly ones. But only God can bring shalom, wholeness. And so Jesus came to Thomas and met him where he was and healed him in his soul and in his spirit. And the apostle Thomas, history shows that he evangelized all the way through uh, India through Pakistan, Afghanistan, and he was martyred in India. He was pierced with, uh, with arrows made of wood. He was pierced through four times. About four of his organs were pierced through, and he died in India. And everybody, non-Christians in India, it's part of their, their natural history. Everyone knows Thomas, so when you go to preach in India, talk about Thomas, everyone knows Thomas, that he was the apostle to India. Bartholomew was, was, um, was, was uh, uh, martyred just outside present-day Armenia. Bartholomew was, was martyred just uh, north of Iran. You know, these, all of these disciples lived for heavenly reward. They were brought from a distorted position where they didn't look like God's image. They didn't act like God, but God, first of all, saved their soul, their spirit, and began working to restore his full image, spirit, soul, and body. And they are wonderful stories. Peter, the apostle, denied Christ three times. And he was feeling very, very badly. Jesus, again, met Peter exactly where he was, paid him a personal visit, cooked him a meal of fish, right on the Sea of Galilee. And he restored Peter. Peter began to be restored in his spirit, then in his mind, will, and emotions. And you, you see the progress of Peter. He preached at Pentecost. 5,000 were saved. And Peter also was martyred here, right here in Rome. He was crucified, inverted, upside down. And all Peter could think of was his heavenly reward. Peter, the Apostle Paul, Stephen the martyr, Thomas, Bartholomew, all of them showed full evidence of having the right heart. And they showed full evidence of the image of Christ. They showed full evidence of the image of their creator, Elohim. And they acted like him. They didn't start off that way, but they ended up 
looking like and acting like their creator. The anointing is here today. Right where you are, wherever you are, it's captured and it's being released to you to begin that transformation, that restoration in you and your seed and your seed, seed forevermore will look, will begin the process of looking like God our Creator in the name of Jesus Christ. I love you, friend. Peace be unto you. And peace be multiplied to you. God bless you. And I rejoice with you in your wonderful restoration process. From Rome, Italy, this is Lemuel Baker reminding you that Jesus Christ is Lord. God bless you.